Hi everyone, this is Nick, and I wanted to show you how I made kind of an interesting um, combination chart uh, the other day, and I posted this over on Instagram, and I actually posted four different options, and I asked my friends which one they preferred. I had a sense of which one was, was probably best, um, and a lot of folks actually responded with they liked a different option, um, and it was kind of a cool trick, a kind of uh, cool technique. I'm not sure um, where or how you might use this, but there could be some, uh, some use cases for it. It definitely is not easy uh, at first glance uh, to understand some of this, uh, but I'm gonna show you some of the options, and I'm just gonna kind of walk you through what I have, and then I'm gonna show you the, the kind of neat trick uh, on the back end. So the first slide that we, the slide that we have right here is showing our percentage of members um, at a um, zoo, maybe Denver Zoo. This is actually uh, fake data, but of course I used to work for Denver Zoo. So um, these are uh, kind of a seven county region that the zoo receives tax funding from. Again, this is uh, fictitious data. Um, and so I wanted to show the percentage of our members uh, from each of those seven counties. So I did that here in this dot plot here, kind of a Cleveland uh, dot plot, I think, right along the line here. So 27% there. Now, when you do a dot plot like this, you don't have to necessarily end your x-axis at 100% because we're labeling the data directly. So if you want to show bigger, if you want to show differences or uh, between groups, this can be an interesting, uh, nice trick to do. Just adjust that axis label, but then make sure that every data point um, on on the scale is labeled if you can. So this dot plot is showing the percentage of members from each, uh, or percentage of visitors, sorry, from each of those counties. And then I wanted to show the percentage of members and non-members, zoo members and non-members within each of those counties. So I thought I would do that by selecting these little pie charts. So 27% of our audience was from Denver County, and then uh, we had 58% uh, of our Denver County residents were members, and then 42% were non-members. And I annotated that over here with these text boxes. So you can really see the 27% were members, 58% of those are members, 42% of those are non-members. I know that there are some better ways probably to visualize this, and I might do this if I was presenting it in kind of a one slide, uh, a slide build, and just kind of show those numbers over time in different charts, but I wanted to see if I could combine everything into one uh, slide or one visual. So I just did these individual pie charts. These are all individual pie charts for each of those counties. Now, the next way I did was this way, and I thought this was the way that everybody would like. So we did the dot plot again to show the percentage of visitors from each of those counties, and then within each of those counties, we have the percent member and non-member. So this, I thought, was much easier to understand at first glance, and I assumed that everybody would like this option. But then I thought maybe I could com combine the dot plot and the chart and the pie charts. So I actually had the the dot plot go to um, in the percentage of visitors there. But then I embedded a pie chart in each of the dots, and I still annotated that over here. So if you spend some time with uh, the slide, you can understand it. And so I really didn't think that people would like this option. Um, it probably isn't really the best to understand at, at a glance, but I thought it was an interesting technique that you could actually put a pie chart into one of those dots. And then I had one other option, which was a lollipop, and this actually was the option that people said that they liked best over on Instagram. So the lollipop is kind of like the dot plot, but it just gets rid of the, the trailing dot or the, or the trailing line across the page. And so here you can really see that 27% of our visitors were from Denver County, and then the percentage breakdown between them. And again, I have these annotations and these labels. These are just text boxes and line shapes, um, and that will help our reader understand what this chart actually means. So I thought I would just escape out of this slide and then show you how I made that slide uh, or show you how you can embed a pie chart into those dots. So we have other videos about how to make uh, dot plots and how to make um, lollipop charts. Lots of people have posted blog posts and things like that online and other YouTube videos that I will um, that you can uh, watch in my video or I'll link some below as well. Um, and you can see that this is just a single chart right here, a single live chart, uh, chart with the lollipop. And then over here, I actually have saved all of my pie charts. These are each individual pie charts that I just made uh, one after another. So all you need to do to put this is the this is my Denver uh, pie chart right here for members and non-members. Here is my dot plot. All we need to do is isolate the Denver dot. And so I'm gonna double click on that so you can see now none of the other dots are selected, just this Denver dot. 
And then what I'm gonna do is we will right click and go to format data point. The format data point menu pops up. We wanna go to the paint bucket right here and then we wanna click on marker. And then what we're gonna do is update the fill of the marker and instead of a solid color, we are going to update it to picture or text, uh, texture fill. And when I do that, uh, it already is gonna give me that pie chart because I actually already copied it. But here's what you need to do. I'm gonna to go to this first uh, pie chart here. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna copy it, and then I'm gonna to go to my dot, the marker fill option, picture text, and then I'm gonna say from clipboard because I copied that pie chart and it's on my clipboard and uh, behind the scenes. And I'm gonna say clipboard there, and then it's gonna work. Now, one thing that you notice is that it really um, decreases the size of that. So then I thought maybe we'll just decrease, uh, increase the size of this marker. So go up to that marker, the marker options here. And right now it's set to 30, but let's just go ahead and say, let's set it up to 50, maybe even 55. I think that, oops, 555, that's too big. 55, that looks probably pretty good. Let's go ahead and do that same technique for all the other ones. I'm gonna right click and copy. Let's isolate this Arapaho dot here. Marker fill, picture, update the size. And now you have these pie charts. Pretty cool. You can do it with lots of shortcuts. Control C, isolate this dot. We will picture fill, clipboard, excellent. And we gotta update the size there, 50. So pretty cool. You can adjust the, the size as you need to do that. One, two, three, four. This is my atoms. And Control-C to copy. Anything that's on the pic, uh, clipboard will probably update. Oh, you got to make sure to update those. That's nice. And we'll update the size. So anyway, pretty cool. So I don't have to go through the rest of it, but it takes a little bit of clicking, kind of an interesting technique. Uh, sometimes just because PowerPoint or Excel lets you do something doesn't mean we should. Um, so you should probably use this with caution or care, but I think it's kind of cool to know that you can sort of fill elements of a chart with another image or with um, or with even another chart. Now you can't update the pie charts once they're in the dots. Those are really effectively just images. So that's why I keep the live pie charts off to the side over here. If I ever needed to update the data in those pie charts, you could update the data there and then re-update the dot by doing that copy and paste um, or fill uh, the marker with the picture image uh, technique. So pretty cool. If you like this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up and make sure to hit the uh, subscribe button and the bell next to it to get notified every time I post a new video in data design, usually PowerPoint, Excel, or Word. Remember, you don't have to be a professional designer to look like one with the software that you already use every single day. I had a great time making this video and I look forward to seeing you all next time.